Let me start today with this. What the Bears draft on Thursday? <laughs> All of these months of speculation and mock drafts and trades and poor speculation and insiders reporting nonsense will end on Thursday. <laughs> Question is, what will the Bears do at number nine? A lot of you did not like my last video, my last opinion on Jalen Carter. <laughs> I guess nobody cares about character anymore, and that's fine. I don't care. But the question is, as of right now, according to multiple reports, the Bears are tied to Jalen Carter and Peter Skaronsky of Notre Dame, also Paris Johnson Jr., top offensive tackle from Ohio State, all in the mix. At number nine, now these are according to mock drafts and reports and speculation. We don't know what the Bears will do at nine. And don't quote me later and say you were wrong. I don't know. I'm not in on these conversations. I don't know what the Bears are going to do on draft day. They might trade back. I think they may, really, realistically. So we don't know how this whole thing's going to shake out. Here's what we do know. <laughs> the Bears have an excellent opportunity to bring in a specific need at nine if they stay there or even if they trade back to 17 or 15 or wherever they go. They're going to retain a first-round pick and hopefully draft somebody they need. All three of these players who I mentioned in these reports are people the Bears need. You can even add in Jackson Smith and the Jigba. I doubt the Bears are going to get him, but they could get him at number nine if they wanted to. And I'd be okay with them drafting a receiver at nine. I'm not one of those people. I'm not going to kill them if they draft the top wide receiver on the board who Justin Fields played with at Ohio State. be a smart move to me, too. Probably not going to happen, but I'd be okay with it. The Bears have a decision to make. Ryan Poles has a decision to make, and I'll tell you this much. Here's what makes me wary of Jalen Carter. Here's what makes me doubt all of these reports and all this news and links surrounding the Bears and Carter. Let's put it this way. Ryan Pauls, first time really getting a crack at the draft. He did last year, didn't have a first-round pick, hard circumstances, just came on the job. This is going to be his first year in which we could properly evaluate what he did and how he did it. Would it be smart for Pauls in his first year to draft somebody like Carter with the baggage that comes along with him and potentially not even being the best defensive player in this draft. Does it make sense to take on that responsibility? Does it make sense to have to worry about what Carter is going to be like off the field or what could happen still with that case in Georgia? We don't know. If I were Ryan Poles, I would not be taking that calculated of a risk. Look, if you're a hobby Roseman, if you're an established general manager, <laughs> it would make sense to take somebody in like that because your job security is there. You've been around for so long. People are going to trust your guts, and you will be able to take a big swing and miss and still retain your job, and it's okay. No one's going to be out for your head. You think anybody's going to kill Howie Roseman, Eagles GM, if he took Jalen Carter? They just won a Super Bowl. They just extended Jalen Car uh, Jalen Hurts. No need to worry. No need to fret about somebody like Jalen Carter with his history, but Ryan Poles, first year, if it doesn't work out, maybe he'd be on the chopping block. And that's a fair point. Hey, GMs have been fired for much less. And if I were Ryan Poles and I'm looking out for my own ass, and I have a coveted first-round pick still after the trade with Carolina at number nine, I would not be pissing it down the drain for somebody who could piss it all away. Somebody like Jalen Carter, who may get into more trouble and who certainly has some baggage. All I'm saying is, as talented as Jalen Carter is, don't right away buy that the Bears are going to take him at nine. This could be an entire ploy to force teams to move up to want Carter at nine if he's still there. I'm not buying Ryan Poles putting his career early on the line for somebody like that when he has everything he needs. He made all these trades and all these moves. He has a quarterback. Why hurt yourself and hurt your resume after all that you did that was good this offseason? Why do it to yourself? Why put yourself in that position 
and go out on a ledge. And I'll tell you what, if you want to go out on a ledge for anybody, they better be damn special. And although Carter is, anything can happen when you get to the NFL. I'm wary of that situation. And all of you who have been following it closely, I'm sure you would agree. I am not going to buy for one second that that's the Bears' number one choice. At number nine, they have other needs too. They do. I'd love Peter Skaronski at number nine. Northwestern product. Hometown kid. Solid offensive lineman. Really a left tackle, which the Bears do need. Paris Johnson Jr., formerly Justin Fields' teammate, part of Justin Fields' offensive line at Ohio State that was so successful, the Bears could take him at number nine. According to this mock draft from Touchdown Wire's Doug Farrar, he says this quote, The Bears wisely traded down from the first overall pick, and with the knowledge that they don't need a quarterback, that they do need just about everything else, they especially need pass protection. And as Braxton Jones is their projected starting left tackle, it might be time to address that early in the draft. Johnson, Paris Johnson Jr., is not a perfect prospect, but he's the best pass-blocking tackle in this class with physical attributes that transition easily to the next level. When people doubt C.J. Stroud as a prospect because he was throwing from clean pockets so much of the time, well, here's the primary reason why. Very true. Paris Johnson Jr., is a stud of an offensive lineman. Peter Skaronski did great at Northwestern. He's going to have to adjust to the left tackle position, but that's possible. And Jalen Carter is Jalen Carter. We know about his potential, but we also know about the off-the-field stuff. We also know about, and this is key, showed up to the combine 15 pounds overweight, didn't even run a 40. I've never seen so many people make such big excuses for somebody for really no apparent reason. I mean, Jalen Carter is all the makings of a bust. And I'm not saying he's going to be that way, but 15 pounds overweight. Coming to the combine, not looking ready to go. All this baggage off the field. What the hell's going on with Jalen Carter? And the question is, can the Bears fix him? Or can any team bring him in and invest so many resources and so much time to the point that it's worth it? And maybe it would be for some teams. Maybe for the Bears it'd be worth it. But I'll tell you this, and I'll tell you straight, I'm not going to kill Ryan Poles if he passes on Jalen Carter. In fact, I'd actually rejoice. I don't want somebody like that on my team, and that's me. I understand not everybody has a morality clause. Not everybody sits there and thinks about off-the-field stuff. And look, some teams succeed, and they take in people who have off-the-field issues. They still win, and that's awesome. I will continue to say this to blue in the face. The Bears are a class franchise. Love them or not, love the way they operate or not, they are one of the toasts of the NFL, even today, even though they've been mediocre for X amount of time. They're a great team, great franchise, storied history. They usually don't dabble in situations like this. I would be shocked if not only Ryan Poles did it, but the team did it, and they signed off on it. It would go against everything that they usually are about. If they do it, good for them. If Jalen Carter comes in and performs like a human wrecking ball, good for him, and I'll take all my words back. But right now, if I'm an evaluator and I see this guy showing up overweight, 15 pounds, if I see him not willing to run a 40 and not even being able to tackle dummies at a combine, and now he has this... Reckless driving charge from January? I'm not going to sit here and say, wow, what a great prospect. I better take him at number one. Would you? I don't understand what all the excuses are for. Why there is cover from the media about this. There are other players in the past who've had these situations occur. 15 pounds overweight, not ready for the combine, criminal history, and it has hurt their draft stock. For some reason, though, it's not hurting Jalen Carter's. There's something going on that we don't know, is the point. There's something going on we don't know. And I've read the scouting reports on Carter. The thing is, when he's on, he's on. When he's off, he's off. He does take plays off. It's been proven. (laughs) It's been seen on tape. And when he takes plays off, unfortunately, it's noticeable. So that's not something you want to hear about again in a scouting report. 
I just caution everybody to not fully buy the Jalen Carter hype. And I'd be perfectly okay if it's Skaronsky or Paris Johnson or maybe JSN even. Doubt the Bears are going to take a receiver at nine, but if they do, I would rejoice as well. There are other options out there that would be suitable at number nine besides Jalen Carter. Has to be Jalen Carter. No, it doesn't. Doesn't have to be. It could be somebody else. And that's okay. Caution everybody, though, just to think about it, I would not be surprised if the Bears move on and don't take him. Why would Ryan Poles take that risk? And why would the Bears want to deal with that whole situation? To me, it makes no sense. And although reports state today that the Bears are going to be tied to him and Skaronsky and Paris Johnson, I have a hard time believing Carter is the favorite amongst the Bears inside the building. Only Thursday will show us. Only Thursday will tell what is really going on. But don't count on Carter going to the Bears on Thursday. And if they do it, great. But he better prove himself. Because if the Bears are going to be investing all these resources into him to get him better, to get him more in shape, to get him avoiding off-the-field issues, that's great. But we better see results on the field to justify it, or else it's going to be a waste. Another team will take him. Other teams are interested in him, and that's awesome. Good for him. Despite all this stuff he's overcome, he still has an opportunity to be drafted quite high in the NFL draft. That's great. I just don't buy the Bears being 100% on the Jalen Carter hype train. And guys, you shouldn't be either.